All the game is missing now is some challenge, and that's where our star and vortex level elements come in. Players will get one point for every star they collect, and lose one point every time they fall into a vortex. To track scores, we need a property to hold the score and a label to show it. So let's add those now. At the top here, inside our game scene, we'll say our score label is an SK label node implicitly unwrapped and our score is zero by default and when that changes a did set property observer will update score label dot text to be equal to score string interpolation score just like we've done many many times already we're going to show that score label in the top left corner of the screen so i'll move down to did move to view here we go and i'll add some code in here we'll say score label equals sk label node using the font named chalk duster uh, score label dot text is score zero score label dot horizontal alignment mode equals dot left score label uh, dot position will be cg point x16 left hand side y16 at the top and um, we'll also score label dot z position is two so above everything else and finally we'll say add child score label like that to add it to the game scene when a collision happens we need to figure out whether it is a player colliding with a star or the star colliding with a player the same sort of philosophical problem we've had before and our solution is the same too We'll figure out which is which, then call another method. So we'll make our class conform to the SK physics contact delegate protocol. Then we'll add this line into did move to view. We'll say our physics world dot contact delegate is self. Tell us when a collision happened. We already know which node is our player because we have a dedicated pr property up here called player. That in turn means we know which node isn't our player which means our did begin method is fairly easy. I'll scroll down, find some space and say did begin. And first we're gonna pull out the two nodes that had contact. We'll say guard let node A equals contact dot body A dot node else return. And the same thing for node B. So we'll do guard let node B equals contact dot body B dot node. And both times return. Just bail out if for some reason a collision happened and we're not sure what it collided with. And that's perfectly fine here. It's a ghost collision. Now what we want to do is call a new method called player collided with, telling us what the player hit. So if the player is node A, they hit node B. If the player is node B, they hit node A. So we'll write a stub this method first and then call it. We'll say func player collided with some sort of node an SK node. And there'll be no code in there for now, but we'll go ahead and call this thing inside did begin so we can start using it. We'll say, if node A is the player, and we know for sure that player collided with node B, the other thing. And an else block, if node B is the player, then the player collided with node A. So it's going to call player collided either with node B or with node A, depending on which node the player was. There are three types of collision we care about. First, when the player hits a vortex, they should be penalized. Second, when the player hits a star, they should score a point. And third, when the player hits a finish flag, the next level should be loaded. I'll deal with the first two here, and you can think about the third one yourself as a challenge for later on. So when a player hits a vortex, a few things need to happen. Chief among them is we to stop the player controlling the ball, which we've done using a single Boolean property called isGameOver. Let's add that now. Way up here, we'll say uh, var isGameOver equals false. So the game's active by default. Now we'll modify our update method so it only works when isGameOver is false. So it can't carry on trying to tilt the iPad and similar after they are dead. So we'll scroll around and find the update method. There's load level. There's create player, such as began, moved, ended. Here's update here. 
uh, there's a good place for me to remind you that you click up here it says it's game over you get this nice jump bar where you can just jump around to find method straight away and choose update from that list anyway we're going to say here at the start of the method before this compiler directive we'll say guard is game over equals false else return so if the game over is actually happened, if it's definitely game over, don't let them have any more control over the game. When the player climbs the vortex, several things need to happen. So let's go ahead and start writing player collided with node. We'll say if node.name is vortex. So the players hit a vortex, what should happen? Well, the first thing we're going to say is the player's physics body is dynamic equals false. Stop this thing from rolling around like a ball, so instead we can suck it into the vortex. Move it based on what we want, rather than the physics world that's happening right now. Second, we'll end the game. We'll say, is game over, is true. Stop them trying to do anything else, because they've just lost their life. And we will subtract one from score, by saying score minus equals one, like that. Next, we need to move the ball over the vortex to simulate it being sucked in. It'll also be scaled down at the same time. So we'll say let move equals sk action dot move. I want to use to some point. In this case, node dot position, the position of the vortex they touched. Duration will do 0 0.25, so a quarter of a second. We'll then say let scale equals an sk action dot scale to and for the size we're going to say 0.0001 so really really tiny to scale away like it's disappearing down a vortex again duration 0.25 we'll also remove it by saying let remove equals sk action dot remove from parent and then put all three of those together into a single sequence move first then scale then remove. Let sequence equals sk action dot sequence. The array of move, comma, scale, comma, remove. So it will move towards the vortex, disappear down into it, and then be removed from the gain scene. So now we can go ahead and run that on our player. But when that sequence is finished, we want to make sure is game over is false again and recreate the player at their starting location. Now we already have a method called create player. It is here. This makes a new sprite node, places it correctly, gets a Z position, makes it a ball and so forth, and adds to the game scene. So we can call that once our player animation has finished. Because that go ahead and moves it, scales it, and removes it from the parent. It destroys it from the game entirely. So we can go ahead and recreate it by calling create player again. So let's go down again to the bottom and we'll say player.run that sequence. And when you finish, we'll run a closure. We'll say uh, weak self in, then self question mark dot create player. So make a new player sprite node at the new position and similar. And self question mark dot is game over is false. Reactivate the game. So that all happens if they hit a vortex. If they hit a star, we'll destroy the star and add one to their score. So we can say, else if node.name is equal to a star, node, i.e. the star, dot remove from parent, score plus equals one, add one to their score. And finally, else if node.name is equal to finish, then, Go to the next level. That's your own code to do. And that method actually finishes our game. So it's now down to you to try and play the whole level without falling into a vortex. And as to what happens when you hit the finish flag, well, nothing. Yet. That's down to you. I'll go ahead and try this out in a simulator. I'll choose the iPad Air third generation and press play. Uh, keep in mind the simulator has a very low frame rates, so it's quite tricky to steer around. It's much, much faster and smoother to use a real iPad. Uh, but for uh, screencasting purposes, I'll use, use a simulator here. So I'm going to go ahead and press here. Make this ball move down a little bit towards the star. Come on, you can do it. There we go. Got the star. Got one score now. See down in the bottom corner here. Oh, 
and I'll triangle this way across this star over here, uh, down here. Then let's go right over here and try and get this star up here. Great. And over here, oh no, hit a vortex. You see the animation? I got sucked in, it shrank away, and recreated me over here. I lost a point two. So again, oh, the score's now one. And then again, down it goes. It actually looks really nice for a very, very simple SK action. That vortex animation looks really good, actually. Um, just don't go too close to them, otherwise you do get sucked in. That is the nature of vortexes. Anyway, that finishes our game.